All right, in this segment, we're gonna talk more about acids and bases. So the learning objectives for the segment, we're gonna understand chemical definitions of acids and bases, uh, define Bronsted-Lowry bases and acids, identify conjugate acids and bases, and understand acid and bases base interconversion as part of a chemical equilibrium. Okay, so uh, you know, in the next couple chapters, we'll be talking a lot about applications of the ideas of chemical equilibria that we just recently covered. Um, and so that's what we'll be doing. Using, to, uh, using chemical equilibria, the, the, the techniques, the tools that we uh, learned in that to understand some of the most important chemical reactions around us. So starting with acids and bases in water. Now this uh, involves uh, a whole lot of different chemistries that are really going on. Um, acid and base reactions rarely go fully to completion. They usually only go partly to completion. And we're gonna use the acid-base equilibria um, uh, framework in order to understand that. Um, but it's important because acid and base chemistry happens all around us, uh, vital for any sort of biological processes. In the environment, you have uh, a lot of acidic reactions. If you think about um, uh, acidifications of the, ocean, uh, of the ocean because of absorption of CO2 and all the behaviors and how it affects um, different sea life, depending on what the pH is. So um, very important there. Uh, industrial synthesis, a lot of these involve acids and bases, uh, proton transfer from one molecule to the next, which frequently uh, involves uh, you know, acids and bases being in, uh, in that. So um, it's a very key part of chemistry. And so we're going to be reviewing for many people, um, but really digging deeper into how we can describe acids and base reactions. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's really, when you think about acids and bases, it's really the chemistry of protons moving back and forth between molecules. Um, and because there's so many hydrogens in so many molecules, this, this happens all the time. Okay, so three chemical definitions of acids and bases that uh, can be useful. Uh, the old definition, sort of the, the first one was the Arrhenius definition, where an acid creates an H plus and a base creates a uh, hydroxide ion, OH minus. But people realized soon that there were, you know, that didn't quite fit the bill. And so the Bronsted Lowry definition uh, is the newer and probably the most common is that an acid is a molecule that donates a proton, uh, H plus, and a base is a molecule that accepts a proton. So uh, you have this, this, uh, this, this pairing, uh, donating an H and accepting an H. And that covers more things. For example, ammonia does not actually create OH minus directly, but it does accept an H plus. Um, the Lewis definition, uh, very general. We'll see some examples later. We're not gonna um, um, cover it in this lecture since the, it's, it, um, it covers some cases that are not quite as simple. Um, and that an acid is something that accepts an electron pair and a base uh, is something that donates an electron pair. And that could be useful in some circumstances, although not what we're gonna be covering uh, in the next couple lectures or so. Okay, so the bronsted lowry acid base concept. Um, in order to tell what the acid is and the what the base is, it's really just a matter of keeping track of where the proton is. You know, like that shell game. Okay, where's the proton? Under what? Attached to which molecule is the proton? Hey, if you got that figured out, then you can figure out what the acids and bases are. So um, here we have some molecule that has a hydrogen that uh, can come off it. Uh, and so that is the hydrogen donor. It's the acid because it has a hydrogen it can donate. And in this case, uh, the B is going to be uh, the base because it can accept the H plus. So really you only need to, you need to look at this in terms of chemical reactions. The same molecule can be either a proton donor or a proton acceptor, depending on exactly what the reaction is. So in this particular reaction, we have HA uh, plus B going to be H plus plus A minus. So in this case, clearly HA donates a proton to B to create BH plus, and then it's one proton short, it's A minus. So, um, but we can read it in both directions as well. Uh, in this direction, it's a chemical equilibrium, so there's both products and reactants present. So here we've got um, a base, uh, we've got an acid, uh, it donates its H plus to the base, but on this side, then BH plus is an acid because it reacts with A minus to donate the H plus over to A minus to form HA and B. So we have uh, on each side, we have an acid and a base because you know, somebody's got the H plus, uh, whichever involves the reaction that the H plus is being given to uh, the other molecule, that's the donor and whatever is, um, catches the proton that's tossed from the other molecule, that's the base. So you have these conjugate acid and base pairs. On one side of the equation, 
uh, you know, HA is an acid here, uh, but then if you take the H plus away, it's the conjugate base of that acid. And the same in this case here, BH plus is the acid, B is its conjugate base, uh, BH plus is the conjugate base of, uh, says so the conjugate acid of the base B, okay? So pay attention to where the proton, uh, proton is. The same molecule, if it differs by an H plus, those are the conjugate acids and the conjugate, uh, those are conjugate acid base pairs. Um, so one key point about acids and bases, uh, you know that there's a lot of different acids, uh, you know, hydrochloric acid, hydrobromic acid, nitric acid, all of these, you know, have a lot of different chemistries. Uh, but the key point here is that it's the creation of the H plus and OH minus that makes acids and bases chemically powerful. If you think about hydrochloric acid, very strong acid, eats through a lot of stuff. Hydrochloric acid dissolves in water to make H plus plus uh, the chloride ion. But we know the chloride ion is extremely stable. It can form ionic solids, but otherwise it doesn't really react with much. Uh, you know, it's the same stable ion that's in seawater. It's not particularly reactive. Um, and that's the key is it's not the chloride ion, it's the H plus that's highly reactive. Uh, chloride does its job by getting out of the way such that you have H plus uh, that is highly reactive. Of course, H plus, as I think we mentioned before, uh, it usually occurs, um, uh, it's not just H plus, it occurs uh, bound to water. So you have HO3 uh, with an overall positive charge, hydronium. Whenever we talk about you know, uh, a, a, a protons, H pluses in water, it's really the hydronium ion that is the stable species, that protonium and hydronium ion. Okay. Um, so yeah, so it's not the HCl, it's, it's Cl, it's the H that's highly reactive. Uh, sodium hydroxide dissolves completely to Na plus and OH minus. Uh, but again, sodium ion, it's a very stable ion. It likes to get solvated and just not react very much. Uh, it's the same stable ion that's in salt water again. Uh, so it's not the sodium ion that is the key. It's the OH minus that's the reactive part. So a lot of times when we think about uh, acids, the, the, the thing that comes along with, with the um, with the H plus or, uh, or in bases, the thing that comes along with the OH minus is not really the important part at all. It's all its job is when you dissolve in water, get out of the way. So we have a large concentration of H plus or OH minus that then that's what's going to be reacting. Okay, so that's the interesting thing about it. It's, it's the chloride in, in hydrochloric acid, the chlorine doesn't do anything. It just sits there while the uh, high concentration of hydronium ions starts to eat things up.